Welcome to Love Unlimited Church Online. My name is Mark Rodriguez. I'm the pastor of the church, and today we have a great message prepared for you. But before we jump in, I'm going to ask you to do a few things. First of all, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and start a watch party. Just look for like that little popcorn symbol. Click on that. Share it with your friends. Every week, we hear of stories of God changing people's lives because you are sharing these messages. Also, remember after the message to share it on your page. If you're watching it on Instagram, you could also hit that little paper airplane symbol in uh, your feed and you could share with friends and invite them to join you in this message and also if you're watching on YouTube go ahead and subscribe to our channel like the video and interact with comments as you're watching the service guys we have a great service for you in a message that I've titled where is God also wait till the end of the message so you can worship with the love unlimited band some of you may not know this, you know me as Pastor Mark, but before I was Pastor Mark, I was actually a graphic designer. It's something that I've always loved doing. I actually do a little bit of that now as a church planner to support my family. But many people ask me, Mark, how did you become a graphic designer? Well, when I was growing up, my parents owned a print shop and a sign shop. And I worked with my dad there all the time since I was a little kid. And there were moments I wish I didn't have to work as much as I did as a kid. But looking back, I am so grateful that my father instilled in me so many great principles. Principles that I use in life every single day. I remember the day that my dad bought his first computer. He was so proud when he showed it to me. And I quickly followed to ask him when I saw this thing. I'm like, um, who's going to operate it? And I'm going to show you a picture of the computer my dad brought to the shop. Check this out. I know what you guys are thinking as you're looking at this picture, but Pastor Mark, we didn't know uh, you were that old. Uh, here's the thing, I'm not. That machine was from 1971 and we were in 1993. But you know what? It's all he could afford. And I learned how to use it with a lot of trial and error. And you know what? It started me off as a graphic designer. And the reason I like graphic design and being involved in printing and signs is because I love designing stuff that my dad would sell. And then we could drive around the city and my dad would point to the things that we had done together when we were installing these signs. Remember, remember when we installed that one? And like I said in the beginning, it's all that we could afford. We didn't have a lot of money, so that meant we didn't have all the fancy tools needed to install some of these signs. And it would take us hours, sometimes even days, to install one sign. And he would look at these signs with so much pride and say, can you believe that we did that? Do you remember El Aguacero, the storm that got us when we were installing this one? Remember what happened when we were on top of that building and the wind was blowing? It was really amazing. And sometimes for me, when I revisited these moments with him, it brought joy. He taught me one of the most valuable lessons in life, and it was nostalgia. And some of you, uh, you've heard the word and you think it relates to like weird paintings and pictures of old. But nostalgia, the definition of nostalgia is the pain of remembrance, the pain of remembering, this beautiful pain that comes sometimes when we have these moments. And, and maybe for you, it's a song. Maybe for you, it's a picture. It's a place that brings you back to a place in your life where you have these tears of joy that you can't contain. And sometimes tears of the pain or tears of where you've come from. The children of God were actually great at this. They would build these altars these pillars where they worship God in this exact place where they met God, where God spoke to them, where they had victories after wars. And in these moments when God blessed them, they would commemorate that moment with these pillars of stone that they would make. It's all over the Old Testament. Adam did it. Abraham did it. Isaac did it. Moses did it. And many others, they built them too. In the book of Samuel, they actually pro were properly named Ebenezer. Ebenezer means that up until this place, God has helped us, that God was here with us. And see, the significance of this is that every time they saw this monument that they built, this, this pillar of rocks that they put together, they remembered a time when God showed up. See, every time someone walked by these Ebenezer's, People would be passing by and, and they would look at, at this pile of rocks and say, this is holy ground. 
because God was here. God was in this place because right before them was this record of a person or a group of people that encountered God and commemorated that moment. In Genesis 28, it's actually one of my favorite Ebenezer moments. And, and Jacob is, is running from his brother, running for his life, leaves his family. And he goes to sleep and he has this dream of this stairway that goes from earth to heaven and heaven down and these angels. And God promises him the same promise that he gave to his fathers. And, and that was that he was going to be the father of a great nation. And after this encounter with God, he actually builds a pile of rocks. See, you're probably thinking, well, I, I want to have an encounter with God like that, Mark. How can I encounter God and and here's something that you need to know you can't encounter God without pursuing him you can't have a moment with God you can't have intimacy with God if you don't pursue him and that's why the first step to having an encounter with God is seeking God and and when I hear that I could have said looking for God I could have said you know trying to find God no but when you seek something there is this this moment or this sense of desperation that happens because you need to find something that you don't have. You remember ever losing something of value. You remember like not finding something that you love, something that someone gave you to commemorate a moment, maybe a wedding ring. Maybe you're looking for what right before this video, we, I had gone fishing with my family and, and I can't find my wedding ring. I'm recording this video. I can't find my wedding ring. And so I have an imposter here. The good news is that as I press play, I'm like, oh, I know exactly where it is. I put it in my glove compartment right before I got out of the car so I wouldn't lose it. But for a moment there, there was this sense of panic and urgency like, oh my gosh, where is it? So if you want to have an encounter with God, you need to seek God. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So you're probably thinking, how do I seek God? Well, the same way that you would seek anyone. Think about that moment when you fell in love with someone or you were super attracted to someone and you did whatever it takes to be next to them, to be close to them, to smell them, to see them, to give them something, to do something so that they would notice you, to write them a note, send them a text to like them or follow them on social media, however it was that you pursued that person. Isn't it a beautiful thing to pursue someone and then to be pursued by someone? There's just this like feeling of gratification, this, this moment where you feel accepted by someone to the point that they would pursue you. And so you're like, Mark, I, I get that, but, but how do I seek God? First thing is you gotta talk to God. All right, have you ever had a good lasting relationship where you didn't talk to someone, where you didn't have conversation with them? It's impossible. You have to talk to people to get to know them, right? And that's why it's so important to pray. It's so important. And you're thinking, oh, prayer, prayer is difficult. I don't know how to pray. Prayer is the most simplest thing that you can learn how to do. They taught me to pray when I was just a little boy and they just say it, said, talk to God the same way that you talk to your parents. Have a conversation with him. Talk to him, cry with him, complain to him, but, but have this moment where you seek God in the morning, in the afternoon, in the car, in the bathroom, wherever you are. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. That means pray without stopping. The next thing that we need to do is we need to learn about God. And what's the best way to learn about God is to read our Bibles. Read your Bible. Oh, but I don't know where to start. There's a bunch. Listen, you live in a time and a place where you don't have excuses of, I don't know how to read the Bible. The Bible can be read to you on your cell phone, on your tablet, on your computer. You can pick Bible plans. There are thousands upon thousands of Bible plans that you could jump on. And hey, if, if you want to know uh, a Bible plan. If you want a suggestion of a Bible plan, go ahead and send me a text message right now to 786-541-1020 and say, Pastor Mark, where do I start? <laughs> Pastor Mark, uh, send me a Bible reading plan and I'll go ahead and I'll respond to that text and send you something that you could start reading immediately. All right. Another way to get to know God, to seek God is to serve God, right? Because that's what we do in a normal relationship. We talk to the person. We learn things about what, what do they like? What music do they like? What's their favorite color, right? We get to know that person and then we do things 
where we serve that person. We do things that make them happy. We take them out to dinner. We buy them stuff. We do nice things for them. We serve them. We serve God. Begin to serve God. All right. And, and, and you're probably wondering, how can I do that? You can start serving God by maybe joining us at one of our outreaches. We're feeding people every single Wednesday. All right. This last Wednesday, we fed over 1,000 families. All right. We need a lot of help to get this food to people, to put it in their trunks, to prepare the packages that we're putting together. We get together every week. And if you want to be part of one of these outreaches, just text the word outreach to 786-541-1020. Text the word outreach and say, hey, I, I want to be part of that. All right, another way is to join one of our socials, join one of our, our groups, our small groups. Maybe you know them like that. We're starting brand new season of small groups on September 13th. They're going to be on Zoom, so you don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to worry about like showing up at someone's house that you don't know or at a coffee shop. No, it's going to be on Zoom. It's going to be online. They're about an hour long. And in these socials, you meet other Christians, which is another step to getting to know God is surrounding yourself by God's people. Remember when I was growing up, I always knew when a girl liked me in our youth group because they would become like really good friends with one of my sisters. All right. And so you get to know the people of God and you grow with them and you help them grow. And then um, join us on Wednesday nights. We do these incredible Zoom prayer nights, probably my favorite night of the week. We worship. We hear testimonies of what God is doing in people's lives. We pray for one another. We pray for the sick. There's a short message, and then there's a little bit more worship, and then we kind of chat. We have uh, uh, our little um, four-year time, our little uh, social time where we talk to one another. We laugh. We ask people how they're doing, and it ends pretty much right at nine from eight to nine every week. These are ways that we can seek God and grow. Start doing these things and you will see how your life will begin to change and you will have an encounter with God. Maybe you're watching this and you're saying, I've done all that stuff, but right now I'm in this dry spell. I feel like I'm under attack. I feel like the world is against me. You know what tends to happen to us a lot? When things are good, we forget about God. We distance ourselves from God. See, there's two types of people, the ones that walk away from God either by choice or by drifting. Right? And then there's Christians that for a moment or a season, you have a problem, you're, you're in a situation, you're going through a trial, and you take your focus off of God, off of Jesus, and you start looking at your problems like Peter did. You guys remember that story where, where Peter sees Jesus walking on water and he says, well, if it's really you, master, then I want to walk on the water too. And Jesus says, come. And Peter starts walking on the water. And then all of a sudden, the wind begins to blow. Water begins to splash on his face. He starts looking around at what's happening. He takes his eyes off of Jesus and he starts to sink. That's what happens to you and to me at times when we take our eyes off of Jesus. That's why in Hebrews 12 too, it says, Fix your eyes on Jesus. What does that mean? Fix your eyes on Jesus. It doesn't mean look at Jesus. Fix means like, you know what? Like these cameras that I'm looking at right now, they are fixed. They're hard, tied and tightened so that they don't move so that I can speak into them. And you can get this message without the camera start wobbling around. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't take your eyes off of him. In the midst of your problems, you need to also remember God. It's so easy to be consumed by our situation. We take our eyes off of Jesus and we forget about God. The Bible says this in Psalm 105, remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. Guys, I'm a dad. I talk about my kids all the time because I love them and I'm always around them and my, my world revolves around them. A lot of the decisions that we make, the things that we do, the places that we go to, the house that we live in is because of our kids because we love them. And there are times when my kids are scared. There are times when my kids are sick. There are times when my kids are sad. There's times when my kids are crying and I hug them. And you know what I say every single time they're in one of these moments, I'm like, hey, stop crying. Don't worry, Bobby is here. And I hear them take this deep breath of relief like Bobby is here and I'm going to be okay. Hey, whatever you're going through right now, whatever problem life may bring your way, I want you to know that God is ready, willing, and able to hug you and say, it's okay. Remember. I'm here.
but it's so easy to forget God. You want to have an encounter with God. Remember God. See, the children of Israel, they went through so many trials and tribulations and problems when they left Egypt. A lot of them they caused upon themselves. They fought trained armies. Okay, they cried out to God many times, Lord, why have you done this to us? Why have you taken us out of Egypt to die in the desert? And I love this reply that the Lord gives them in Deuteronomy 7, 17. He says this, if you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispose of them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to the Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Guys, isn't that incredible? God is saying, remember, you're here complaining and thinking that you're going to be defeated by this thing. I want you to remember that I'm the same God that parted the Red Sea, the one that drowned Pharaoh and his army as he was pursuing to kill you. He was pursuing to destroy you. I will not abandon you. What is it that you're going through now that you feel all alone? that your problems may be strangling you. Let me tell you something, that God is ready, willing, and able to rescue you right now. Remember, you can't encounter God without pursuing him. Man, I, I can't help but think of this same story that I told you about when Jacob was running and he has his encounter with God and, and God tells him, hey man, I, I'm gonna give you a great nation. You're gonna have children that are gonna be more than the number of the sand on the sea. And then 30 years later, when Jacob is worried that he's gonna be killed, he's worried that his life is gonna end and his children are gonna die, and he's gonna lose all the riches that he's accumulated in 30 years, God tells him, I want you to go back to the place. I want you to go back to that place where you had that dream where you had that first encounter with me, where you built that pile of rocks. It's in Genesis, at the end of Genesis, Genesis 35. It's incredible that just that, that encounter that God has with him once again and says, remember. I want you to know something, that God loves you. He knows what you're going through better than you know yourself and he loves you and he's ready to rescue you. And he's just saying, hey, seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Remember the things that I've done for you. Remember how I've rescued you. Remember how I forgave you. Remember how I healed you. Remember the stories that I had the same way that my dad would drive down the streets of Miami and say, hey, remember, remember, remember. Hey, I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray that God would set some of you free today. I wanna pray that God would bring some of you to the knowledge of Christ today and that you would offer yourself up to Jesus 100% and begin the greatest journey of your life. So if you've never prayed to receive Jesus, I'm gonna pray a prayer, I'm gonna ask you to repeat it with me. If you're a Christian and maybe you've drifted, maybe your problems have begun to, to drown you, maybe you feel the pressure of the world pressing down on you, maybe today it's time for you to rededicate your life to Christ again and it's okay, he forgives you. Maybe you just need a reset. Maybe you just need to remember. If that's you, Pray this prayer with me. Close your eyes. Say, dear God, I come to you today and I say I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made, for the sins that I've committed. I'm sorry that I took my eyes off of you. Now I give you my life. I give you everything that I am. Be my God. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, have you prayed that prayer? Congratulations. It's the best decision of your life. And now I want to send you some resources that are going to draw you closer to God. All you need to do to get these resources is text me at 786-541-1020 and put the word amen. And I'll send you some resources that will draw you closer to God. If this is your first time watching us online, or maybe you didn't sign up to serve, you didn't sign up to be part of a social, maybe you want to know a little bit more about our ministry I wanna send you a quick connect card. 
all right? And on this card, you'll be able to give us your name and your email address, and we'll send you some resources as well that will help you draw close to God. Maybe you want to get baptized. Maybe you pray today to give your life to Jesus for the first time. All right, I want you to text the word CONNECT to 786-541-1020. Text the word CONNECT to 786-541-1020. All right, maybe you just want to say hello. You can write a little message. You can write a prayer request on your CONNECT card today. Go ahead and do that. Maybe today you want to give a donation to support the Ministry of Love Unlimited. Hey guys, we want to thank you for that because we can't do any of this stuff. These videos are outreaches. We can't prepare to relaunch the church without your financial support. So if you want to support us, you can give a donation by going to loveunlimited.com forward slash give. And right there you'll have a link where you can give online or you can actually give using Cash App by using the dollar sign and the word Love Unlimited in your app on your phone. Now I want to invite you to check out this song by the Love Unlimited band. falls you won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the Bye. 
Hey guys, I hope you love that song the same way that I did. And now I'm going to ask you to do a few things. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, leave comments, share these videos and be part of a life change in someone's life. We'll see you next time.